Hello everyone, this is Genuine Polish, and in this video we are doing a quick, simple how-to with volcanoes. In this video, we're going to talk about how to safely unearth volcanoes, and how to transport that molten metal once you got it so that you can store it someplace safe, or use it to produce steam for a generator. So first off, we have the building. It's actually really simple. All you need to do is surround the volcano with tiles and draw a vacuum. Next, any tile that has the chance to touch the molten metal needs to be an airflow tile. This way you can completely eliminate heat transfer and you have a very safe volcano on your hands. Now, if you wanna just keep a volcano safe and out of the way for now, this is all you need to do. But what if you wanna move the molten metal so that way you can have a volcano tamer or safely store it someplace else? I'm not gonna be covering volcano tamers in this video, but a good use for what I'm showing you is instead of building volcano tamers on top of every volcano, you can simply move all your metal to one tamer and only have that one operating. Cause after all, it's not like you're gonna have more than one or two volcanoes er erupting at any given time. So I'm gonna show you how to move that molten metal with a contactless pump. So first we're gonna build our vacuum room and surround the metal with airflow tiles. Next, we're gonna place that contactless pump. Check out my other video in the description for a quick overview. I recommend using naphtha for the priming liquid, but you can really use anything that works for you. Now we'll need a hydro sensor in the molten liquid. I recommend setting this at green above zero kilograms, so that way it reduces the amount of time that the hydro sensor spends in the molten metal and maximizes your output. This helps to reduce the power load for your pump and reduces the heat that your pump off puts. You'll need a high temperature metal for the hydro sensor. Just make sure that the melting point for the building itself is higher than the molten metal. Most buildings melting points are about 2000 degrees higher than that base metal itself. So for most volcanoes, a still hydro sensor will work. For an iron volcano, you're gonna want a tungsten hydro sensor. The automation wires can be any metal, but the one submerged in liquid needs to be tungsten. Just because you don't wanna have to access this building again, potentially breaking the vacuum and try trying to fix this. It's not going to be pretty. And then you're going to have a mix of molten metals too with different melting and evaporation points. It's not going to be pretty. So for the pump, it's going to generate heat as it operates. Well, luckily we have the priming liquid naphtha, which doesn't come into contact with the molten metal. So its temperature is dependent upon how much it gets cooled and how much heat the pump generates. So what you want to do is you want to have radiant pipes on the feedback line. Either you can have it cooled to ambient temperature or you can have radiant gas pipes that travel past the radiant liquid pipes to help cool the liquid. So now that you have your priming liquid circulating, a vacuum, and your sensor all set up, all you need to do is wait for the metal. You can see here we're moving eight kilograms of molten iron. The better space your primer is in the feedback loop, the more metal you're gonna draw through that line. Now you can safely transport the molten metal from volcanoes to a single volcano tamer so you don't have to build a hundred of them, or to an infinite storage for liquid metals. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this episode. I know this was a short one, but thanks so much for watching guys. New content all the time. The more you like, comment, and subscribe, the more often I can make videos. Thanks for watching guys.